How about 25 for the table? Everyone. Oh, that's so that's so far off. So far off? So far. <laughs> hmm. For me, if it's 16 grand, like I would want to pay like 10. Yeah, there's no way. I don't think we're even close. I think uh what 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 so I think there's I, I think there's 50 grand on the table. The history of sports cards goes back over a hundred years. We are on the pursuit to find the biggest and most interesting sports card collections across the United States. Join us as we travel the large interstates and the narrow unpaved roads in our journey to continue chasing cardboard. All right, so this is our fifth state that we've been in and we've been doing this for about nine months now and a lot of people ask hey how, how's it going are you loving it and I think the short answer is yes we're loving it it's obviously a grind trying to find the right collections trying to find the right pieces to make good episodes but the best part about these journeys to me is being able to navigate new roads and find new people we're finding people on this particular trip that have watched our episodes and were very interested in meeting with us because of the show. So that's a first. It is really, as, as the show continues to evolve, it's opening up lots of new opportunities for us that we didn't expect. And it's, it's really neat, I'm really enjoying it. Okay, so we are in Washington right now. We're gonna go see a collection that's a storage unit find. Some guy who has no idea what's, what's here and he just wants us to come in and evaluate what he has. What's up, Josh? How you doing, man? Thanks for having us out. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So and there she is. Yeah. You, you told me over Facebook Messenger, you what do you buy? Storage I buy storage units. units. Yeah. So I get all sorts of crazy okay. things, as you can tell. Um, I get sports cards now and again. Um, usually not this many, but yeah, there's a mountain of them here. Um, I have another unit here in Salem with a portion, to tell you the truth. But yeah, it's uh, kind of all sorts of crazy things, but this is one of those things. So what I love about Chasing Cardboard is that in this journey, we are seeing people of all spices of life. And Josh is a perfect example of that. Somebody who goes around and buys up storage units and brings it back home very much American picker style. Do you own storage units too, or are you just going and auction? Just buying, auction. Yeah, kind of like the TV show or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And okay. They go with it for a lean or whatnot, and then yeah. we come in and highest bidder gets them. And okay. these, we're in a unit. And I don't know a lot on them. And okay. Just kind of one of those things that how often do you run across memorabilia. like sports memorabilia cards and all the those things is it common not a lot um generally i stay away from them because i go for a lot of money um i more kind of like the motorcycles and other types of things but yeah just depends on it um i've seen some units i mean stack the ceiling with them and they'll go for fifteen twenty thousand dollars it just depends oh, <laughs> what's there yeah. or what not with them wow okay yeah, so I'm just looking to see if there's anything oh, yeah, older in here. Yeah. There's anything that is worth like taking home and trying to salvage. I don't know. <laughs> That's one of those you're like, they're on take here. your it's best guess, of, right? But yeah, a lot of a lot of early '90s stuff, unfortunately, late '80s stuff. There's a, there's some other stuff scattered in. When you see it scattered in, you know they went through, they picked out the stuff, okay. and they threw all the commons in here. Do you kind of look for more vintage or? Uh, I mean, modern vintage. Yeah. If there if there's some sort of interest that I know from just buyers that we work with, then I'll just grab it and deal with it. <laughs> with a different picture. <laughs> when you see a collection that was in a storage unit and you see multiple boxes structured the same way, and this one had 85 Donruss, 87 tops, some modern sprinkled in, and then some other random cards, basically in every single box. He was probably taking those, packaging them up, and selling them on Facebook or Craigslist as $20 a box for random cards. And you see those a lot. If you search Facebook for collections, you'll see those cards and those opportunities popping up, probably what that guy was doing. You know, I, I'm looking for any big names at this point. I'm just, you, everything is taken out. You have, haven't seen one Nothing. popular player. There's yeah, there's just stacks of fake cards, and you, we know because we see these cards a lot. But they're just reprints of you know Mike, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Bobby Orr rookie, Jordan reprints with different photos, a Honus Wagner. If this was real, Josh would be in the Caribbean right now, not here. Unfortunately, 
That's what you deal with, right? You don't know what you're buying from. Say, Some no guy idea. was in his factory printing these off, yeah. probably. This is what happens when you buy units, right? You just yeah, come up with all kinds of stuff. Yeah, miscellaneous crap I just threw back in here or whatnot temporarily. And That's probably famous. Somebody famous wore that, right? So it's unfortunate that Josh has to deal with that because he more than likely has a lot of junk there. And he's really just inheriting a bad business model from the person before. I'm sure Josh will figure it out. He seems like a sharp guy but it's never fun to inherit someone else's mistakes. I got a Korg Toneworks <laughs> AX1000G PSA1. It's a graded card. Uh, I have a, <laughs> this is a, a doll. There you go, there she is. We think it's an American girl. And then uh, some pocket knives for the boys. And we thought we were walking into a situation where today we might identify some cards in, in this collection that he had recently purchased and it just wasn't the case. It was a collection that wasn't a good fit for us because of many reasons, mainly because there wasn't there wasn't really anything of value in that lot. It's hard to tell somebody that sometimes, but he understood and I think he realizes he'll probably sell that eventually. But the cool thing about Josh is that he was okay with us digging around his garage and finding a couple other things for us to purchase and take home. And we wanted to do that anyway because we value his time and, and there were some things that I thought would be fun for my family. So we did, we negotiated on some things. Thank you, Josh. Absolutely, guys. No sports cards, it. 80 bucks, American Girl, foot pedal, knives. You are one heck of a salesman. <laughs> <laughs> How can I not buy from you? Uh, thank you so much, right? All right appreciate guys. it. All right. I appreciate it. Yeah. Take care. So one of the frustrating parts about traveling across the United States is paying the obscenely high gas prices. And trust me, it adds up. We paid about $1,000 in gas just this weekend as we traveled across Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. But we found a little tip. Use the Upside app to save money and put cash back in your bank account. So a lot of apps these days, they give you points and you can convert into prizes and all that stuff. The Upside app is not like that. They actually give you cash back in your app that you can convert to your PayPal account, to your bank account, and you can go spend that on things that you actually love. So next time you need to fill up a tank of gas, pull up the Upside app and find the gas station closest to you that's offering an incentive. You can see here three different gas stations. One's offering 46 cents, 49 cents, 51 cents. It's as simple as clicking the gas station you wanna to go to, claiming the offer, going to the gas station within four hours and uploading your receipt. And 48 hours later, you'll have cash in your account. And the best part is we've worked out a partnership with Upside if you sign up using our link and you use code CARDBOARD25, you're going to get an extra 25 cents off per gallon on your first tank of gas. It's an outstanding deal. You can go take some funds, spend it on your family, spend it on sports cards, and put some money back in your pocket. Enjoy. Now, back to the show. One of my favorite coffee shops in the world is Dutch Brothers. And this is the original coffee stand for Dutch Brothers. I figured we had to stop by and get a coffee here. And we've also heard that Travis, founder, CEO of Dutch Brothers, is a collector. We'd love to have Travis on the show. Hi, Joey. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good morning. Glorious. Thanks for having us. Oh boy, I already see PSA slabs overrun in the man cave. So what the heck, man? So what's your story? Do you, you buy collections? We talked on the phone for a little bit. I've been collecting my whole life. Okay. Uh, earliest memories. I was bringing my whole collection, which was a handful of cards to school okay. and trading. And if it was an Oakland A that I could trade for, yeah. I was winning. Over the years continued on. About okay. three years ago, I started grading myself. Okay. I got my subscription and uh, the PSA. Sent, it sounds PSA, like PSA. Got the first fifteen sent in. Okay. And it was fun, successful. I was worried about sending my cards in at yeah. first, but I finally bit the bullet and did, and uh, haven't looked back. Really? Yeah. I've How many cards have you graded? A thousand cards now. Is it hard to find collections? Are you getting calls all the time? I get calls all the time. You've been doing it a long time, so yeah. your name's probably built up yeah, in trust just, over the years. No, when you go to a yard sale, ask. Uh, people don't usually put stuff that you'd be interested yeah. out in the yard sale. So ask, hey, did you, did you keep the good stuff back? I'm a buyer. Uh, I collect certain players, but if I'm a bulk buyer. Yeah. And a lot of times they are done with it. It's taking up a huge amount of room and I'll go through it, pull out the good stuff and the rest of it. Gone. Gone. 
So I, ideal collector for you now, you get a text from somebody and he shows you a picture of what? What do you, what do you get excited about? I like vintage. Oh. Really? Okay. Um, it's rare. Look, nine out of 10 people that call you have a uh, modern. Yeah. From blaster boxes uh, that they've opened or packs and. Does the well not run dry here? Do you feel like it's just. It, I've had months where I didn't hear a single call and then four or five in a day. Yeah. It's just. You just, it's the beauty you of just it. be ready. That's that's the key. Be ready. That's it. You I mean, should be the one interviewing me because you're the guy with the experience here. I guess switch the spots. <laughs> the reasons are endless, but uh, literally I bought a collection last week where the guy got a new girlfriend and she did not like his card collection and he came and sold it to me. So, so talk me through kind of what's here. I mean, I okay, cannot so I wait to get into this. I pulled out some stuff for you. Um, I think okay. I did. Did you really good? And you think you're gonna be happy? Um, <laughs> okay. A lot of this is my doubles. Uh, wow. Doubles, or you know, or I, I, I kept, I had two, or I kept a higher grade. Multiple sports. I can see a 66 Most Koufax, sports, yeah. 60 Koufax to Luka Doncic to Kobe Bryant. I mean. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Uh, LeBron. You might just have to have us stay overnight tonight. Well, the loft is open so it's all yours so the risk you run and the trap that many people fall into is not valuing your time when it comes to collections like this of course the greatest stuff you can probably flip pretty easy you can go to a card show you can sell it to the people that you know you can put it online all that stuff but when it comes to the ungraded things and there's 50,000 cards you have to start considering how much time it's going to take and so one thing i don't want to do today is feel guilty that i have to buy a collection like that and not think about the time that's gonna be involved to actually move it. And so I'm already thinking, okay, are we gonna be in a position to be able to get what we want? Or are we gonna possibly just start grabbing the stuff that he doesn't want? So I think that's where my mind is at as I initially walk in and look at this collection. Okay, I mean, this is gonna take I know, I told some you, time. It's, that's why I stopped pulling stuff out because I was like, it's gonna get overwhelming. Yeah, this is, I mean, no wonder you're like, you have to stay here tonight because you're gonna literally be up all night. <laughs> all right, so do you, I'm a Bobby Witt guy, Royals guy, but Bobby Witt, I see modern stuff here, so do you have any Bobby Witt stuff? Bobby Witt Jr., of course. Absolute stud for the Royals. Somewhere. Oh my gosh. This guy. <sighs> yeah. That's something you're looking for. He's speaking my language right now. That's the blue paper. Yeah, yeah. Number to 150. 150. PSA 9, so it gives me a little leverage to negotiate down. Set, make sure we don't forget about uh, this. We'll put that one right there. Jason Dominguez. Anyone that says, hey, it's not licensed, forget you guys. This is too cool. You're a JD Martinez super collector is what I would say. Here's some of the JDs that I've been putting away. These are number to 60. This is number 60 of 60 of his main rookie card. Baseball's life. Uh, I noticed my athleticism starting to fade early in high school, so I switched uh, from uh, middle infield to more pitching and first base, and then I ended up just ruining my arm throwing too hard, so baseball was out for me at an early age. It was probably the best thing. I've been collecting so long, and the good stuff is starting to pile up so much that it's it's too much. If J.D. Martinez came in here and saw these, you think he would be impressed with this collection? I think he would be impressed. I don't know if he'd be interested, but he would definitely be impressed. J.D. Martinez would be interested in this. Do I have these giants? Am I looking at the... Uh, yeah, actually. The rarest one of the giants. You know which one it is? Uh... And it happens to be a giant. A short print in the set. McCovey? Oh, Maze. You won't see a nine on that. Like, that's a come across to There's a lot of low-grade stuff, PSA 6s and 7s, that in this market are just really tough to move. You're not gonna get the prices you want. In addition, there's some things that I love in his collection. There's things that he brought out over the course of the night, and I'm thinking, uh, why don't we negotiate on this and not that? And so kind of reconciling that in my mind is probably what I'm struggling with most because I do wanna help him out. I do wanna potentially grab this collection, but I don't wanna pay a price. That doesn't really allow me to be invested, fully invested in it.
So we're still here at Joey's house the next morning and you can see the rain is absolutely coming down. It is unbelievable how much it's rained this week. Breakfast is on the table, coffee's already brewed. Can't wait to spend this morning closing the deal with Joey and hopefully setting the stage for him to continue collecting the way he wants to collect and for us to continue building collections the way we want to build collections. Here's what I'm thinking. Okay. I, I do want to buy it all, but my dilemma is that stuff there, I don't think will price the same. Okay. Because the time it would take me to sell that, same thing you struggle with, right? I, just don't, I don't sell, so yeah. You don't sell, right? Like, but you don't, it's, the way I'm thinking of it is, okay, I have to value my time mm -hmm. for that stuff. Right. Not a lot of big names in there. It's just a lot of stuff that you've taken out. And this is totally fine. I'm okay with buying it. This stuff I priced out last night. Okay. Eight grand is about the price of all this. Of the, of the slabs? Stuff. Not, not the Brady stuff. Everything non-Brady. The problem with it, it's not a problem, but it's the reality, sevens and eights. And there's some yeah, It's all over the board. It's a yep. full collection. Yeah. It's about eight grand. Give or take a few hundred bucks. But like we priced everything out. I put them in buckets. This is 2,500. And I'm pricing this at about four. So like my number is like 15 to 16 grand in market value market value now this is a term that gets thrown around very loosely within the hobby but essentially what it means is the price that the current marketplace is paying for the card in addition as a buyer you have to factor in the direction of the prices when i looked into market value for joey's cards or any cards for that matter i'm able to see where recent prices are for nearly every card and if cards were priced here on a chart i know that realistically the market price is probably down here so I absolutely can't pay in this range up here. For me, if it's 16 grand, like I would want to pay like 10. You're talking for the whole table? Whole table. Yeah, there's no way. I don't think we're even close. I think, uh, what, what, what? So I think there's, I I think think there's 50 grand on the table. Okay. I mean, full value, I think there's 50 grand, I think. 30 would be 60% of that, you know, obviously 50 would be around 25,000. Where's the 50? That's, that's where I'm struggling with. Cause I wanted to try to get to that number, but I couldn't do it. Yeah. I don't know if you really took the time to go through all these. I think you're, you're just kind of adding them up to this like dollar cards. All right, hold up. Let's pause right here. There's easily over 20,000 cards here. It would take another full day to physically add up the values of these cards. When you're valuing a collection this big, you have to, at some point, get an estimate of what's there. You have to look at what it would take to sell, how long is your money gonna be sitting, and how much time you're gonna have to put into actually listing and selling these cards. That's a big number to understand, and it's a big weight to have to carry when you're buying collections this size. I wanted to be totally transparent. Like this stuff, stuff that would go to the show for me would be in like one to five dollar boxes. Okay. That's just the reality for me. Yeah, I mean, obviously you would take all the 20 and $50 bills out first and then do that. Yes. But that's the thing. You, you start taking the 20 and $50 bills out of each box. Those kind of pay for the box. Then you got $300 okay. and $5 cards to do whatever you want with. You know what I mean? That was kind of my thought process on those. But graded, I mean, yeah. you well, may think we're off, but like that's really close to the value. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's in your, your Brady box. What are you at with the Brady box? The Brady side? Well, I guess the whole box. I mean, what what is this box at? Uh, that's there's probably six thousand in that box. Okay. I mean, uh, full value. Yeah. Obviously, you have to make money. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna grade half of these Brady's are low numbers. You're obviously gonna get graded, and you should. Yeah. Um, the reason I even let you have like allow those to be sold because they're doubles. Because <laughs> those aren't something you can find. It's hard to give really bulk discounts on the goat. 100%, 100%, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's what everybody's looking for. Everybody yeah. wants everybody wants the Jordans, Tom Brady's. Um, okay, on these, average is about 50 a card. Okay, yeah, probably. 40 to 80, to say. yeah. I, I went through and yeah. priced 10 of them and they were all in that range. I think that was uh, not really looking at all 50 and just looking at 10. I don't know if it gave you a good idea of really what's yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, some of this is like, I, I can't price every single it, item. Uh, I have to like ev it, evaluate based on like, like this. 
I understand. I can't, you can't price it all. Uh, what would you price that right now for the prime cuts? All of them. Just this, you're trying to just get this pile of prime cuts. Um, yeah, it's probably in the 3,500 range. Three. Okay. So we're really close. Yeah, we're close. I think. Okay. So you're at nine, 9,000 in value for these two. 95. Yeah, I think so. Okay. About there. Okay. And then, uh, do you think I'm off here? I think you're a little low, but not bad. I mean, I think there's 10,000 there. Pretty easy. How about 25 for the table? I mean, oh, so, that's so far off. So far off? So far. <laughs> hmm. sitting right here on this side um i value that at eight we're pretty close on this stuff yeah i said 10 so yeah so we're that's i mean we're at 16 to 18 on everything not this over side here. everything not over and here. i knew this was going to happen because we value this differently a little bit yeah probably mm. so can we meet on all of this and not worry about this right now i or suppose that i would consider that yeah okay yeah. You gotta buy what you want. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I wanna, I, I'm i looking at this like, I wanna buy because I wanna be the guy you call when you wanna sell the rest of the stuff. You know? Yeah. That's, that's the way I look at it. I that's why I called it. you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we're gonna be able to agree on the price on those. I just don't think so. Okay. Unless you wanna go through them really quick again and we can like identify some stuff, but I wasn't seeing yeah, the big names where I was like, I can't value this super high. What, what do you actually value this site at then? This I, side, put, I put 2,500 on it is what I put in my spreadsheet. Which on uh, 20 boxes is like $120 a box. Okay. So that's like 30 cents a card. What would you, what would you price this at? Uh, I mean. Like, what would you pay if you're walking in? To, to if I walked in to buy this, it's hard to say, cause like I said, there's a lot of cards. Uh, I wouldn't ever have an opportunity to buy this many specific cards. Cause there would be a couple, okay. a couple good ones and then commons and bulk junk and Okay. You know, um, there's a lot here. And I think it's important that you actually look. I mean, I, I did I, go through these. You keep saying I haven't gone through them. I've gone through, through them to the extent like it's a lot of the modern day stuff. There's lots of good stuff in there. And I love the Pokemon that you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. But help me understand the number that you actually think is. At $500 a box, there's $10,000. And that's a dollar. 25 a card okay and there's easily a dollar 25 average value in these cards obviously you're gonna pay that full price but yeah there's no way all these cards don't average a dollar to five dollars each so what's the number then i was at 25 that's way too low for you yeah i think even at even at five that's like 200 dollars a box okay it's, it's too low for giving you. it away really i mean yeah what if Would you do 20? <laughs> Double what I'm thinking. Here, here's my struggle at 20. I feel like I'm paying really close to what I would end up selling stuff for. Yeah. A little close it, to the... A little close to market value. And for me, like in this market, like I, I wanted to love this stuff a lot more. I really did. Like there's some stuff I love for myself. Right. But I, I wasn't emotionally attached to any PSA sevens and eights. And there's some good, the vintage stuff is outstanding. Yeah. But like, I would struggle to move that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just what I want to go home with and like <laughs> put in my own PC. Right. But you got to make money. So you can't do that. Yeah. It's a lot of inventory. It is. It's a lot of good inventory. It is. Um, it's a card shop sitting on this table. Really? It is, I know. Um, I've bought a lot of car shop inventory, trust me. I know I have a lot of that stuff. Have, yeah. Not a lot of this stuff. Yeah. So you want to focus on the better stuff. Um, so you're at 10 here-ish, and we're, we agreed that this is market value at 16 to 18. Market value. Sure. For these? For this side. I think you're going to be really surprised when you start going through and you're finding $200 bills to Tom Brady's to 25 and yeah. Your yeah. doubles. Your doubles of 25. Yeah. 
I think you're gonna be very surprised. You don't have to sell me on this box. I, I, I want to. I want to pay for that more box. Bags. But I also want to help you because you want to clear inventory. So I'm like, how can we meet somewhere that makes takes care of us yeah. both? Yeah, it's a lot high end. Uh, I mean, okay. If you're valuing this at 16, we're real. We're really close. Which means I would pay close. I mean, I would pay 10, 11. That's what I mean. That's. Mm. If you were to sell it, you'd be getting 12, 13. Uh, yeah, if that's what the sold, yeah, so what it went for in the end. Um, what if I threw in the two Bobby Wits? Okay. And then you came up to, for the whole table. Or do you want to focus on this site? For 20 still? Yeah. Two Bobby Wits, the whole table, uh, 20. I throw in the autograph baseballs. 15, five. <laughs> I'll give it to you, but 500 bucks. <laughs> oh. Well. Bobby Witt. Looks like another pile over here. Oh, yeah. Looks like we're making a package deal. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want the autographed baseballs? Were you interested in those? Maybe. Takes up a little room, it's all bulky. But. Yeah, I know, I'm thinking about that too, considering it's raining now. Yeah. Um, do you have another number box you wanna pull out of your room and throw in or no? Tell me what what sport, <laughs> rookies, not rookies, yeah. What sport? We could go down that rat hole for a long time, so I don't know if I wanna do that. Bob Celerado. Did you find it? A lot. That's number to 10. Yeah, I did see that one. The lefty, I mean, that's fucking, you don't find a two color patch like that ever. All right, so you're at 15 for the left. You're still at five for the right. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I can't just throw it all in. You're on the room. Yeah, let's not do that. So what about 15 for everything? Even adding. <laughs> That's $1,000. That's gotta be, not a thousand for a nine. Well, I think a raw just went for six something. A raw's a nine. And and the raw's market. ungraded <laughs> and it's not a nine. <laughs> That's the, that's the way it prices now. But okay, well, so we'll, we'll say, okay, F 15 for everything. I think you're only paying for the front half at that. And you're getting the rest for free. For profit. Would you take out these bottom two and switch it out with something a little bit more sweet or no? I don't mind. I'm thinking space consolidation. I'd rather carry something that I'm not gonna throw out. Uh, you got an empty box? I want some Pujols Jeter. This <laughs> kid's stupid. Let's see, short prints. There's probably some numbered cool stuff in there. There's Pujols. That's cool. Number 25 orange. Yeah. So this is like where I put the refractors. And now there's some Griffey like cool numbered stuff in here. A bunch of rookies. Would do 17. Oh, 17 now. Mm -hmm. See, we're coming up. <laughs> so I have to say yes faster, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, probably. I'm struggling with the 16. You're at 17 now. Uh-huh. You won't do 15. You are sweetening the pot. I think, I get, yeah, there's easily 15 on this side. Like that's just free the whole other side. <laughs> All right, if you'll do 16, I'll do 16. Deal. Okay. Thanks buddy, I Thank appreciate you. it. At the end of the day, we got a deal that worked out for the both of us. He got where he felt comfortable, I got where I felt comfortable, and that's the point of a negotiation, a good negotiation at that. But the best part about this trip 
We're spending the last 16 hours with Joey and his family, an incredibly hospitable family from top to bottom. I know we'll probably buy cars, but more importantly, I just wanna spend time with this family. That was fun. We've been on a lot of trips and seen many negotiations, but this is the first time we've had a multi-hour negotiation. I ended up paying a bit more than I wanted and Joey sold for a bit less than he wanted. It's probably the sign of a successful negotiation. You're going to hear more of the results in weeks to come, but we walked away with a ton of inventory. Approximately 50 prime cut autos and jerseys, 40 tri-star sign balls, 200 plus graded cars of stars and rookies, an amazing box of short printed Tom Brady cards, and approximately 10,000 cards of semi-stars and stars that are going to be filling out some great eBay and show inventory. We did learn a huge lesson this week about staying focused on our strengths. It's easy to get distracted on shiny objects, especially graded ones, but you have to understand how to value your time and resources. I know I'll be back spending more time with Joey in the coming months, and we'll be sharing some more stories of our collection buying. Be sure to like and subscribe and keep chasing.